All right, guys, today I'm going to be telling you the five biggest mistakes that I made when I built this van, and I'm gonna go over how I fixed it and what I think I could have done better. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Janice Spiteri, and this is my Nissan NV200 that I just lived in for six months over the winter. I was in it in Colorado from November through April, May, something like that. And those six months definitely gave me perspective on things that I really messed up doing when I built my van. I think anyone who's ever built a camper van has realized that no matter how well you plan things out on paper and how much attention you put into detail, once you're actually in it, living in it and experiencing things in real life, things pop up that you didn't realize would be problems or just things weren't good. So everyone always remakes their van. And right now I am in that stage of tearing everything out, redoing like probably 80% of what I built. So let's get started. I'm gonna run you guys through the five things that I wish I did differently and I'm fixing right now. All right, let's get right into things. Number one mistake was the biggest mistake, my most major thing, and that had to do with my bed which as you can see right now doesn't really exist i am in the middle of a 100 percent full remake i am completely changing my bed and i will tell you why when i first started my plans for this van i wanted to be able to have a couch midday and then lay in a bed at night because this is such a small van i really have to optimize the space that i have so i definitely knew i needed a conversion type of bed and I saw all of the slot design ones. With my minimal building experience and I had minimal time, I thought that would be just too intensive to do. And then I saw a video of a guy who had a different style bed. It folded out with a hinge. When I saw that video, I thought this was something that I could definitely accomplish building on my own. It made sense to me. It seemed simple and quick and easy. So that is the bed that I went with. I made it thought it was great but the first problem that i ran into with this style of bed was that because my mattress laid on top and it was all one piece i would shift it into an l shape for couch mode and then pull it out for bed mode to get to the flap that i had to flip over i had to reach under the mattress and to flip it lift the mattress higher than where my flip came up in theory, this also seemed like not a big issue until I realized I was flipping the entire bed at once. So I had to lift up this whole mattress and I end up having to get my body under it to pull this top over, flip it over, flip it over, and then to flip it back into a couch, I'd have to lift the thing and it was just way more difficult than what I wanted to be dealing with every day. So we're already just the mechanics of the flip out was pretty difficult to deal with but wait there's more the real horror came like three months into living in the van i was at a snowboard competition and i decided to use my propane stove to cook a meal and i wanted to use the wood part of my bed to do it so i went to pull the mattress aside and when i did that I learned that I had a big mold problem. Flashback. Guys, I just discovered the most horrifying thing in my van. Let me show you. Oh my god. There is so much mold underneath my bed. Oh my god, I want to throw up looking at that. End of flashback. Even just thinking about it now, months later, is disgusting to me. The feeling I had when I realized that I had been sleeping on mold for however long, I had no idea, um, that was terrible. And I was in the middle of the season, so there was really nothing I could do. I had to just keep sleeping on the mold. For the next two months, I just didn't convert it from couch to bed, I just left it in one place to try to not stir up those mold pores and every night when i went to sleep i laid down and in my head knew that i was laying on top of mold 
I found out that that mold had happened because I had solid wood and so the mattress couldn't breathe. I did not know mattresses needed to breathe. Now I know. I am finally changing over to this pull out slat style bed. So I'll have my slats here, I'll pull it out and hopefully it should be breathable and a lot easier to convert on the daily. I would sum up my second problem as everything needs to have a place. Making the most of space that you have is a big challenge to tackle when you have a tiny van like this. I don't have the luxury of a transit van where there is that much space. I really have to utilize the space that I have and so I tried to you know make shelves and drawers and things and for the most part they were functional i had all of my clothing in this drawer my electronics in little bins in this drawer i had my socks and underwear and bras up here i had shoes down there i had snowboard outerwear in here but there were a whole lot of random things that did not have a place and it made it really difficult to stay organized and then also get to those things when I needed them. So for example, underneath my sink over here, I didn't have the chance to build any sort of shelves or drawers or anything. I had cardboard boxes and plastic bins and things just stacked up on top of each other, which I thought was fine. Okay, yeah, I have food stuff in, in this plastic box. I have some accessories and things in this bin and whatnot. But what happened was when I needed to get to something that was in one of those bottom boxes, I ended up having to unpack the entire cupboard just to get to that one thing. And then it was an issue too because I also had bins where I had some random stuff that didn't have a place like stationery or art supplies or random kind of first aid things that I didn't need on a regular basis. Stuff like that kind of ended up in random places and then when I needed to get to it they were really hard to find and I just felt like I would have been a lot happier living here if I knew exactly where everything was and everything had its place. So definitely when I make my new shelves and drawers and things, I wanna make sure that there's nothing that is inaccessible on its own. I don't want anything to be blocked in by something else. Whatever I need, I wanna get it out without having to take other things out to get to it. That is my goal because the organization was just so difficult just on a daily basis. While we're over here talking about my under the sink storage, let's move on to problem three. My third problem that I had with my van was just my plumbing situation. First off, I am so thrilled that I found this water pump. I didn't wanna have to do a handheld crank thing because if I want to wash my hands, I couldn't have one pumping with the hand or whatever. So this guy is perfect. USB charging works like a dream. It allowed me to be able to have a sink in my van, but the execution of my actual plumbing setup left room to be desired. First off, I had no idea how I was going to keep my water, which is just a one gallon container of crystal geyser that I can pull out and refill. I had no idea how I was going to keep that up close enough to my pump for the little tube thing to reach the bottom and fill in. So right before I left, I made this last minute contraption. It just came to mind. I was like, I'm gonna cut this milk crate in half, stick it in the corner, just hook this thing down against the wall and it worked. It was not super convenient to take off the wall and refill, but it worked. The bigger issue was the wastewater. I had my drainage pipe come down to just a random container that I found in my house. It was not airtight. It really just sucked. It was a last minute thing. I was leaving that day and I had not figured out what I could drain into. So I took this plastic bin, cut a hole in it, and I was like, well, I'll just, you know, take it out, dump it out, and it'll work out. Unfortunately, though, I realized once I was living in my van that when I would go into this under the sink pantry, everything had moisture on it. And I realized that there was condensation on stuff and it was probably my toothpaste spit and contact solution and hand washing and that stuff evaporating up and turning into condensation on my things, which is so gross to think about. When I'd go reach for a can of soup and it was moist on the outside, I'm like, oh, this is my toothpaste spit that's probably condensated on the soup. So that was one big issue that I need to figure out something to permanently uh, catch 
my drainage. Another issue with my plumbing situation that will bring us into our fourth issue is that my van would get really cold. By cold, I mean it was sub-freezing in here. My thermometer on a lot of mornings said it was 18 degrees inside my van. My water froze pretty early in the winter. Most of the container froze by the end of December and then did not unmelt until the spring. So for a good like two months, I really couldn't even use my water because the whole thing was frozen. So I need to figure out a way that I can keep my water from freezing without having to heat my whole van because I still don't feel like I need to heat the whole van. I just don't want my water to freeze. All right, issue number four that I ran into in actually living in my camper van was that I was really cold. I knew it was going to be cold. I didn't have any sort of heat situation. So living in a place where it was snowing and below freezing for most of the winter was pretty tough. I got used to the cold. Anytime I was in my van, I pretty much was in my zero degree sleeping bag. I was fine sleeping in it overnight, but I learned that a lot of things freeze. Frequently, I'd wake up in the morning and my contacts and the solution that they were in would be frozen. My toothpaste would be frozen. My bottles of drinking water would be frozen. The only way that I could keep like leftover coffee from freezing was to just put alcohol in it. It was like everything just froze every night. I insulated my walls, but besides insulation, I don't have any active heating because I'm trying to stay as low profile with this fan as possible. So I don't want any sort of generator noise happening overnight. I don't want any sort of exhaust. Those are all clues that there is someone in the van. So I don't want that. So I haven't really figured out a solution to heating yet. I did towards the end of the winter buy at Walmart a really tiny little ceramic heater that basically only heated things within like three inches of it and I would very sparingly use it because I also had power issues and that brings me to big problem number five planning for how much power you're going to use and how you're going to source that power is like one of the first things you do when you're planning out a van. So I figured I live a pretty low powered life. I basically need to like charge my phone and use my laptop and that's it. Oh, I guess I have my refrigerator, but that doesn't use much power either. This fun fact about the refrigerator, it was so cold always in my van that I only even turned it on like one day a week and then I just pretty much had it off the rest of the time. Even my lights are powered by battery. I thought I would be fine with this 500 watt power station. I didn't want to have to learn how to wire an inverter or anything like that. This guy was the simplest and easiest option for me. I can charge it by having it plugged into my engine. So I have a little lawnmower battery attached to my engine with a controller on that. Whenever my engine is running, the lawnmower battery takes power and then powers this. So I figured, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm driving to the mountain, back from the mountain town every day. So that will charge this up on my way to the mountain back and then I can use my phone and this that. It turns out batteries take a lot longer to charge than I realized. So while I was charging on the way to the mountains, it was not charging enough. I wasn't making up what I was using in a day. So it slowly depleted, depleted, depleted. And then I'd have to go somewhere one day where I could plug this into a wall for like 10 hours to get it to fully charge back up, which was a hassle. I had looked at solar when I was first making my plans, but I thought that being in the mountains in the winter time, it would be snowing, there wasn't gonna be many hours of sunlight and the solar panel would just be useless basically. I was like, it's never gonna get sun. But then this winter, since I was actually paying attention to how long the sun was out, I realized it didn't snow that often. It would have always been dry up there. And there was a fair amount of sun during the day when I was snowboarding and my car was parked for six, seven hours, it could have been getting sun. So that is actually the first problem that I have solved. I went and added a solar panel to my roof and my month in Mount Hood was a good test of that. And I'd say like 95%, I got the power that I needed. <laughs> I had the added issue this summer of actually having to run the refrigerator every day, all day, because it was very hot. But I'm pretty sure that when I get to the winter and I'm not running the refrigerator, I will be all set with power. So I did solve my power issue, but that was something that I really had a hard time with this winter. So there you have it. My top five biggest mistakes that I made when I made my van 
and I'm now in the rebuild to fix those mistakes and I should be all set to get out this winter. Hopefully this video keeps you from making some of these same mistakes or at least keeps you aware of some other things that can arise that you may not have thought of. And let me know in the comments how your build is going. All right, see you guys around, bye. Life isn't perfect. It's messy and unexpected, but it's wonderful. You can find love, magic, and beauty all around you if you chase after it. So find what lights your soul up and go out and carpe your happy.